I lay on my bed trying to collect my thoughts. After Anaka's panic attack, I found myself fundamentally reassessing the relationship we have, we share, and what I know about her. I had a hard enough time dealing with four months in the hospital. One look at her scars tells me that she was in, she was in one for a lot longer than I was. But that, but that is it, me. <sighs> be that as it may, I know. I, next to nothing about her past. She has told me about the house fire, but only in the most basic way. And one of her family. I still haven't asked Lily about them. There hasn't been a good opportunity to bring it up. I didn't know where she grew up or what her school, old school was like, nor her past friends, her wishes and ambitions, not even her taste in music food and movies. All the little things that I knew all about my old friends. Just what have, been, have I been doing for all this time I've been with her and Lily? In the distance I hear the bell signaling to the classes. With any luck, Lily soon realized that neither Nako nor I are around and return to the dormitories. My mobile phone starts to ring, cutting my thinking short. It quite startles me as I've rarely been called since coming to Yamaku. Hello, Hisao Nakai speaking. Oh, Hisao. I'm glad I found you. You weren't at any other usu uh, usual places, so I thought this would be the best way to contact you. I probably should have guessed it would have been Lily, as she was one of the few people I've given my number to, even though the phone, even through the phone, her voice sounds slightly on edge. I don't remember you giving her phone number to you, or you giving your phone number to her. I, Tanaku and I left class early. She had some kind of panic attack. The line goes silent. If it weren't for the background static, I would have thought Lily had hung up on me. I understand. Could you please come by my room? I'd like to talk with you. Sure, I'd, I'd appreciate the chance to have a bit of a talk, actually. Good, good. I also have some bad news. I think we should discuss this in person. It's hard to grasp the seriousness of the situation from Lily's tone. She sounds so calm most of the time, but that could be a good or bad thing, depending on how you look at it. Okay, I'll be right there. I collect to knock those cool things from my desk and head straight for Lily's room. I wrap my knuckle on the door and she soon calls me in. Lily sits at the table inside her room, looking a little worse for wear. I guess that's because of the bad news. Following her gestures of invitation, I sit across her from her and lay an uncle's thing down the table. Well, there's no panic and point there's no point in either of us waiting. Would you mind going first to Sal? What happened today? My very memory of the incident is already beginning to fade, but I explained it as best as I can to Lily. Inviting Hanako to work with the group, Shizune and Misha questioning, our foray to the town just getting discovered, and the subsequent panic attack. I had Shizune's reaction almost as an afterthought, but Lily seems to have some kind of comfort in hearing about it. I guess rivals don't seem to rival. I guess rivals don't become rivals for no reason. There must be some history there, but now isn't the time to explore it. I see. She had, she, she had said her therapist sessions were helping, but I had my doubts. It's quite a shame. Her birthday has caused problems before, but I hope that she had improved with you around and the more intensive therapy. Where is Hanako now? Last time I saw her, she was in the infirmary. I guess she's gone back to her room by now. She wasn't in the library or the tea room when I checked, so I can only assume that too. You said you also had bad, some bad news? What's the matter? Do they concern Anako? Lily shifts her position, position, both the body's way of saying she's searching for the right way words. My aunt has fallen gravely ill. 
I'm afraid I'm going to be heading back to Scotland to visit her and spend some time with my family. What? Is she alright? When do you leave? I'm not altogether sure of exactly when she, how she's faring at the moment. The last I get her, the last I heard she was stable. I'll be leaving Saturday. That's the earliest flight that I could get. Stable. That's code word for needs to stay in the hospital. I've been stable long enough to know that none, to know that it doesn't necessarily mean someone is in good condition, but merely treading water. On the upside, stable is much more than critical condition. At least she's not on the brink of death. Stable. That's a relief. Yes, but it seems that I won't be here for Nako's birthday. I wanted to tell you now so we could think of something before we told Nako. But after today's events, I'm not sure if there's going to be an issue if we simply cancel the party. I don't think that's such a good idea. Nako already knows that we're planning a party now. To go back on that seems like the wrong thing to do. Also, we should do something for you going away, right? Make it sound like I won't be coming back. If all goes well, well, I should be only be away for a week, though possibly two. That's one relief, at least. With that in mind, what do you suggest then? Given the circumstances, I don't think karaoke is being really appropriate. You're not going away for the greatest of reasons, so having too much fun would feel wrong. What did you do for about birthday last year? Last year, I literally couldn't get her out of her room. She locked the door. All I could do was leave food outside for her, making sure that she was at least eating well. This is perhaps the most depressing, depressed I've ever seen her and her and Billy act. I feel sorry for her, given how defeated she must feel to be unable to help her closest friend. Perhaps it would be better to throw a party before you leave then. That does sound like it'd be best to e be the easiest option. I think we should at least tell Anako both about your trip and her party. I have her things from class as well. That's a good point. Should we go visit her now? I, I think that'd be a good idea. Part of me is dying to see Anako. The last time I saw her, she looked like death walking. And these last few hours have torn me in parts thinking about it. We quickly get up and file out of Lily's room. Knock goes in the next door in the same hallway. Knocking lightly, get us no response. But the door proves to be unlocked. Lily pauses for a moment at the handle, unexpectedly moving, moves under her hand before opening the door. Knock's room is startlingly bare and monotone, and there are no decorations on the plain white walls. A plain dark blue blanket and only a few books and papers are purely utilitarian items on the shelves. Even her bed sheets are monochrome. The entire room feels as, as subdued as Hanako's character. <sighs> Hanako herself is lying curled up on, on her bed. She may not be crying now, but her eyes are closed tightly to stop herself and the tracks left by her tears still sit on her reddened cheek. I quietly walk in and set her bag down on her desk, afraid of startling her. Hello, Hanako. Estelle told me what happened today. Are you alright? Hanako's eyes open, though only a little. Huh. I'm okay. She tilts her head slightly to look at me, noticing my grimacing before I can hide it. So, sorry for making you wor worry. R really, I'm fine now. She doesn't look nor sound okay, though at least she seems more calm than before she, w she was before. She still looks as if the slightest breath could mostly break her. I said it before, right? You don't need to be sorry for this. Sal's right. We, I, shouldn't have hidden something like her birth, like a birthday celebration from you. 
I see Anako shiver at the word. Nelly picks up on the silent half hollows and crouches down on Anako's level. I'm the one who should be sorry, Hanako. Hanako's eyes open to peer at Lily. She looks at Lily for some time, taking in her face with those dark and ana analytical eyes of hers. Lily must have made the right impression on her as Hanako recovers enough to prop herself up on the bed and shift to sitting on its side. Hanako worries about many things, but troubling others is a foremost among them. Hearing Anako shuffling, Lily moves forward and feels the side of the bed, eventually taking a seat beside her and taking Anako's left hand in both of hers. The feeling of me being out of place when two, when the two are together are less than in the time that we've known each other, but it's still occasionally very much there. This is one of those times, I think. Lily, if you want me to go. I don't want that. Wait, what? He asked Lily, right? Yeah. Lily and I both surprised at Hanako's mustering her courage. A half mumbled okay is all I can give her in reply. I take her desk chair to sit in. Hanako, I'm afraid I have some bad news. So Lily's gonna break the news now. With Hanako having affirmed our relationship so clearly, perhaps Lily thought the timing was good. At least as good as it will ever be. My aunt has fallen ill, so I need to return to my family for a time. Concern replaces Hanako's remorseful expression. Your family? You mean in Scotland, right? That's right. Akira and I will be leaving Saturday. S so you're going away? I won't be long for. I won't be on, gone long. Probably only a week or two. I'll be back before you know it, and the sow will be be here, right? That's right. I'm not going anywhere. Hanako seems to take only minor comfort in this, but she does manage to summon up some resolve from somewhere inside her. Is your aunt gonna be all right? I'm not sure. Silence falls, expressing that the thing that's truly to truly bring Hanako out of her rut is another misfortune. I decided to bring up the only matter that brought us here, distract at least in part of this small feeling from meeting the room. Anyway, we think that it would be a good idea to have a going away party for Lily, and I could double as. Yeah, I cut myself off before mentioning her birthday, and that seems to be a trigger for such a fierce emotion within her. Lily gives Hanako's hand a gentle squeeze. Is it alright by you, Hanako? It won't be anything lavish or overdone, just something small in my room. So, so just in the school, right? Just us? That's right, just the three of us. If you like, I could ask Akira to come as well. Okay, you're only going for a week? One week or two, yes, I promise you won't be any longer. It's gonna be, it's gonna be two weeks. Uh, okay, she keeps saying it's gonna be like one or two. Most people would be upset at hearing about a friend's family member falling ill and happy at having a party, but with Hanako, it seems that both events are on the same level. Alright then, you look like you need rest, Tanako. So it might be best if we all went back to our rooms for now. You know that if you ever want anything, you can always talk to me or Sasao, right? Lily's voice is pensive. An unusual edge for someone as confident as her, right? herself as she. I understand. Thank you, Lily, Sal. Well then. Good night, Hanako. Night. I let out a long breath after the door closes behind us. It feels a little like I've been deep underwater, and only now I've been able to come up from it for air. Lily doesn't seem to be doing well either. She looks pale and drawn. 
Are you alright? I'm just a little tired. It's been hectic recently. Have you slept well? A little tired sounds like an understatement given how you look. I think I managed to get a couple of hours sleep before class. I'll be okay. I feel bad about pressing Lily right now, but I think both of us are pretty tired from everything that's happened as well. I think you should get some rest. It's been a big day and staying up isn't good for your complexion. Thank you for your concern, Ms. Howe. Good night then. Okay. Good night, Lily. I leave Lily in the hallway as she opens the door to her room and begins to make her way to my own and make my way to my own. As I walk down quietly quiet hallway, I can't get the image of an alcohol in my mind out of my mind. Huddled and pitiable, lying helplessly with tears on her cheeks. I begin to think that she was just a normal, if extremely shy person, where her problems run much deeper. Trying to take her relationship further than what we share now, when she's so fragile and vulnerable, wouldn't be right. I don't need to be more than her friend in order to protect her, to try and stop anything like this that ever happen again. The possibility of my feelings for her going beyond that. That doesn't matter anymore. Anaka is precious to me, and that's why I can't take advantage of her. But even still, there's still that sting I feel when I think that way. For now, I need to sleep. Tomorrow, hopefully, will be a, a better day. <laughs> is more noticeable in her absence than when she is in the room. I feel her empty desk calling out for me. I find myself peering over my shoulder endlessly, hoping that I'm hallucinating and that Hanako will magically appear. She makes sure she's as small present as possible when she attends class, and although she has been getting better recently, that fact has never changed. Nobody ever pays her any heed in class, and now that she's not here, they don't notice her absence. It's as if she just never existed. The lady did say that her skip in class wasn't an unusual thing before I met her, but it's still very off-putting. The bells heralding the end of school makes me jump in my seat. It's only now that I notice Misha prodding me in the side with her mechanical pencil to get my attention. Hello, is anyone in there? Hey, stop that. Ah, there we are. Welcome back to Eartha Chan. What are you talking about? You keep on dazing off into space, and I was beginning to think that you were trying to contact alien life. I really didn't get much help sleep last night. So I don't doubt Misha's words. I'm not sure whether it was due to my medicines, a side effect, or an alcohol's panic attack yesterday. I'm worrying about her in general, or all three. I yawned hardly for <sighs> resting my chin in my palm. Having been right how badly I slept. Hey, are you really alright? Yesterday kinda of rattled me as well. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I wanted to speak to Hanako again though. Did you see her last night? Yeah, Lily and I talked to her. Um, this may sound weird, but can you tell Jazoon thank you from both me and Lily? I know Lily technically didn't thank Jazoon, thank Jazoon, but I could tell by her reaction last night that she wanted to. At least that's how I worked it down in my head. Oh. Er, uh, I think... What Chichan is trying to say is, You're welcome. The furious signing and Shazun's red and cheeks tell me that what she said was entirely different. 
Her bland, flustered expression is amusing, almost to make me chuckle. <laughs> What's so funny, Chad? Was it something we said? No, no. That's not it. I was simply thinking about how cute Shizun can be at times. Wah ha ha ha! You're right. Chichan is really cute when she tries not to be. I noticed Misha, Misha decides not to sign her response to Shizun. Maybe Shizun's rage is enough to encounter to any quantity of cute. <laughs> Nevertheless, Shizun quickly calms down and signs something else to Misha. Oh. Oh? Okay. And Chan. Shitan wants you to come have dinner with us. Dinner, eh? Turning away from the a bit them a bit, lest I be swayed by their pleading smiles. I'm beginning to mull it over. The invitation clearly is tempting. A takeaway dinner with two cute girls is not a bad thing after all. The thought of an knock locked up in a room though keeps dancing on the edge of my mind. Sorry, I'll have to pass. Oh. Misha doesn't tighten up my response, but Shizun picks it up on easel picks up on it easily enough and grimaces in disappointment. She moves her arm, assumedly beginning to some form of either protest or corrosion, but stops uh, herself and taps Misha's shoulder twice. Once Misha gives Shizun her attention, the only statement Shizun has on the matter is a shrug. Oh, well, it's your choice, Chan. I promise I'll join you two another time, if that helps. Misha perks up at this, but Shizun doesn't share a reaction. With well, a flick of head to signal that to Misha to follow her away, Shizun simply raises her head to silently wave me goodbye. As though two make their way out the door, I return the gesture until they're out of, the si out of sight. I don't think they would have been so disappointed, and it makes me feel like a little bad for ditching them. Still, I have things to do. The girls' dormitory is especially rowdy today, with a number of girls loudly playing games and watching television in the common room on the first floor. I can hear their voices even now standing in front of Hanako's door. It's not in contrast to the emptiness of the room of the floor she's on. The voices from below make the emptiness feel all the more lonely. I had hoped Hanako would be in class today, especially after the talk Lillian had with her last night, but I feel like I shouldn't hold it against her. It was a pretty awful episode, and I have experienced it firsthand. Must not be all the worst. Not knowing what state she's in, I can take a breath. I take a small breath before giving a few sharp knocks on her brown door. All I can do is stand and wait, doing my best not to feel anxious. As the second wears off, I begin to think she might be asleep and didn't hear me knocking. The door handle rattles a little before I can raise my hand and knock again, though. The door, open, the door opens. A sil sliver die appearing in the gap, only just large enough for it to peer through. I'm sure the girl wants to install people in her dormitory door if only such a thing was allowed. I just stand there and smile at her. I don't think words would really help her after all. The act is returned in kind with Hanako wordlessly looking at me. The gap's not wide enough to see her expression, and I can only guess what she's thinking. Time passes as we look at each other, the only sound being the disembodied gaily guide of the, from the ground floor. I'm not sure how long it takes, but eventually the eyes move away. I keep wondering whether she'll let me in or shut me out until the door slowly begins to creak open. Now that I have a full view of her and her bedroom behind, the first thing I notice is that Hanako's hair is quite damp. She recently showered, which is made even more obvious by the scent of shampoo wafting her towards me. The look on her face seems one of curiosity, 
as if she's not really sure what to make of me. Even so, I'm not really sure. I'm not really all that sure what she's thinking. It feels as if, as if she's gone away for a long time, and having now returned, neither of us knows what she's what to say to the other. Naka realizes she's staring, looking away awkwardly before turning to the side and gazing at her feet. I decide to take it as an invitation to step past her into the room, closing the door behind me as I do so. I can see her hands fiddling in the folds of her oversized gown that hangs from her shoulders. I try to concentrate on what I can say with the sound of her addle of her from her Dale adults adults my senses to my surprise it's not me but Tanago breaks the silence why because uh why did I come here I was worried about Hanako so I came into her room she let me in as I hoped and then what what did I do to what did, what did I mean to do? What did I mean to say? Why didn't I think this through before coming here? I want to make up for what I feel. I caused at least partly. I want to try to remove the distance I feel between us since then and to see her happy. How can I do that when I don't know how for. No. Uh, the first thing about her. I wonder, I wonder if this is how Iwanako felt when she saw me lying in the sterile pastel blue hospital bed. I, uh, I, um, a deep sigh steadies my nerves a little and ends my stammering. I don't think I've ever felt this nervous around someone before. When I'm like this, I don't think I can lie. Even I could bring myself to Anako, too. Anako would see through it right away. I don't know. I just wanted to see you, I guess. Her fingers stopped moving, giving me a little surprise. Looking up to her face, she gives me a sweet smile and a nod. The, that was satisfactory. The answer for, was that was a satisfactory answer. For? Um. Since you're here, I'd like to play a game of chess with you. I almost had my head in disbelief. That's all she wanted to do. After all, I've been winding myself up so much. This play a game. Looking at her face though, an attentive smile perched upon it. I realize that this is more than that. She could have not bothered answering the door. She could have shut it as soon as she saw my face. She could have asked me to leave. She could have rejected my, me at many points, but she didn't. Now with this calm face, she wants me to play a game that was played that we played when we first really spent time alone together. A feeling of relief washes over me. Everything will be alright. Anako has led me into her world. As long as we can be together like this, I think everything will be alright. It would be my pleasure. The day of Hanako's birthday is finally here, and I think I'm gonna end it off here, cause that was, that was obviously a big part. That was obviously really big, and it's, we still have Hanako's birthday, which is gonna be even more. I hope you enjoyed that part, because. I don't know. Mm, I'll see you next time.